Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to handle timeouts when you're sending requests using the Python request library. So if you like this video after watching it, you can check out my Learn Python Request course. This is where this video comes from. So you'll see more of the same in that course. Hope you enjoy the video and thanks for watching. Sometimes when we're writing our requests, we want to make sure that the request doesn't go on forever. So sometimes the server does actually exist so we can connect to the server, but the problem is the server takes forever to return a response and we don't want to sit there waiting for the response to return. And remember, like I said before, requests are blocking. So the application will stop and wait until the request has returned. If we don't want to wait too long, then we need to set a timeout. And setting a timeout is going to be very, very simple. So I will send a request to something on HTTP bin. So let me just copy this. And then the timeout will be the number of seconds that I wait until I just give up and say, I don't want to deal with this endpoint anymore. So for this example, I'll set the timeout to be 10 seconds and I'll just call the, just this endpoint. So I don't really need to go to anything specific yet, but what I'll do is I'll run main and it returns. So it did not time out, but if I shorten the timeout to something unreasonable, let's see if it times out on me. Okay, so now I get this exception, connect timeout. So if I go ahead and copy that, I can then try for it. So try, accept, and then request.exceptions.connect timeout. And I'm going to print timed out. So I'll run this again. And we see I have the timed out down there. And if I wanted to use a more realistic timeout, let's say 10 seconds, then what I'll do is I will go to the delay endpoints. Let's see. Delay, it takes in a variable in, which is the number of seconds. Or actually, it delays in minutes 10 seconds. So if I just pass in in a zero, it should delay for 10 seconds. So what I'll do is I'll set the timeout for 15 seconds and then I'll go to delay slash zero. So it delays for zero minutes, 10 seconds. And let's see if it times out. Doesn't time out there. If I change this to one, let's see what happens. So zero didn't work correctly. Change it to one. So it's telling me that it should have delayed for one second. And it just appears that this documentation is a little strange. So delay, let's try 10 and see if this is supposed to mean seconds. So if this takes about 10 seconds, then we know that in is supposed to be seconds and it looks like it. So. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, and 10 seconds should be about up, so it should return any moment now, and it does. So I have a delay of 10 seconds. If I set my timeout to be five seconds, though, then instead of returning successfully, it should time out, and I'll see my custom error message timed out. So after five seconds, it raises this other kind of timeout. So in the first one, I had a connect timeout, and this one, I have a read timeout. So the exception is a little different, but I can still catch it. So instead of connect timeout, I'll use read timeout. And I'll do this again. So the difference between the two is subtle. Sometimes you are able to connect to the server, but the server is taking too long to respond. And other times you can't even connect to the server. So it just depends. Uh, in the first example, when I had it as a thousandth of a second, I couldn't connect to the server in that time. But this time, it does connect to the server, but it doesn't get the response fast enough. So it's a different exception, but they're both similar. So that's how you use timeouts. And remember, if you 
if you're expecting the API to fail to connect or just fail to respond in a reasonable amount of time, then you want to catch those exceptions.